this time i hit the button i didn't use my star 9 <laughs> okay. okay thank you prabhu so okay. we are starting class number 9 and class number 9 we are covering verse number 29 verse number 29 is the first verse that brahma talks about in his govindam prayers okay so i will um, read the verse first and then we'll do the word to word as usual we'll go on चिंतामणि प्रकर सत्मशु कल्पवृक्ष लक्षावर्तेषु सुरभीर बिपालयंत लक्ष्मी सहस्रशत संभ्रम सेव्यमानम गोविंदमादि पुरुषम तमहं भजामि चिंतामणि टच स्टोन प्रकर ग्रुप्स मेड ऑफ सद्मशु इन अबोध kalpa priksha of desire trees laksha by millions av avarteshu surrounded surabhihi surabhikaus abhipalyantam pending lakshmi or goddess of fortune sahasra of thousands shaka by hundreds sambhrama with great respect sevyamanam being served govindam govinda adi purusham the original person tam him aham i pajami worship translation i worship govinda the primeval lord the first progenitor who is tending the cows yielding all desire in the abodes built with spiritual gems surrounded by millions of purpose trees always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of lakshmi or gopis nice Yeah, actually, the purport is very small, so we'll read the purport also, then we'll get into discussion. Purport. By the word chintamani is, is meant transcendental gem. Just as Maya builds this mundane universe with the five material elements, so the spiritual chit potency has built the spiritual world of transcendental gems. The chintamani, which serves as material in the building of the abode of the Supreme Lord of Goloka, is a far rarer and more agreeable entity than the philosopher's stone the purpose tree yields only the fruits of piety wealth fulfillment of desire and liberation but the purpose tree from the abode of krishna bestow innumerable fruits in the shape of checkered divine love kama dhenus cow yielding the fulfillment of desire give milk when they are milked but the kama dhenu of guloka pour forth oceans of milk in the shape of the fountain of love showering transcendental bliss that does away with the hunger and thirst of all pure devotees the words laksha and sahasra shata signify endless numbers the word sambhrama or sadhara indicates being saturated with love here lakshmi denotes gopi adi purna uh, uh, sorry adi purusha should be there is this and looks like it's a typo there adi purusha means he who is the primeval lord such a beautiful purport so um each and every word that is being spoken by brahma is being elaborated uh, by bhakti sadanta saraswati and he is telling us how the same things in the material world they have a very different purpose but when you see the same things in goloka vrindavan they are totally different they are just satisfying the devotees and what do the devotees want they want endless love for krishna so this endless love for krishna is being satisfied again and again by so many ways so let's before we uh, oh yeah we have to do a quick recap because we have to finish what we have done in part 1 so i'll try to cover it as fast as possible because we should not forget part 1 before we enter part 2 so i will do the entire part 1 quickly and then we'll get into uh, today's class quick recap so far class number 1 with the introduction how chaitanya chaitanya how chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, retrieved the brahma samhita from the adi keshava temple and we saw a, a breakdown of the brahma samhita class number 2 were verses 1 and 2 which is ishvara parama krishna which is the paribhasha sutra uh, of the brahma samhita and uh, we saw a general description about goloka vrindavan and how goloka and gokul of this bhauma vrindavan are the same Class number three, we covered verses three and four. We saw the transcendental residence of Radha Krishna, the central world, and then we discussed about the yantra, the shatkona yantra, and the mantra, 
ಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಗಾಯತ್ರಿ ಅವರು ವಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ದ ಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪ್ರಕಟ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ರಕಾಟ ಲೀಲಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಒನ್ ಎಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅಪ್ರಕಾಟ ಲೀಲಾ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗೋಕುಲ್ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ದ ಪೆಟಲ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಲೋಕ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ರೆಸಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ದ ಚತುರ್ವ್ಯೂಹ ಅವ್ರ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಲೋಕ ಹೂ ಅದ ಚತುರ್ವ್ಯ ಪ್ರದ್ಯುಮ್ನ ಅನಿರುದ್ಧ ಶಂಕರ್ ಸನ ವಾಸುದೇವ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಲೋಕ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಆದಿ ಚತುರ್ವ್ಯೂಹ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಚತುರ್ವ್ಯೂಹ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಲೋಕ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಲೋಕ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮಿಸ್ಟೀರಿಯಸ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ವೇತ ದ್ವೀಪ್ ವೆರ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ರಸೈ ದೇ ಸೋ ಆನ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಪೋಟೆನ್ಸಿ ಹಿಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಎಸ್ ಯೋಗ ಮಾಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಅಸ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ರೆಕಮೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ನಾ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಫೈವ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಲಾಡ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಪೊಟೆನ್ಸಿ ನೋನ್ ಎಸ್ ಮಾಯಾ ವಿ ಸೋ ದಟ್ ಮಹಾವಿಷ್ಣು Uh, is that his internal potency known as Rama Devi or Yoga Nitra who is within him. And uh, out of compassion for the living entities, Mahavishnu begins creation by the conjugal relationship he has with uh, Yoga, uh, Yoga Nitra or Rama Devi. Then we saw how he glances on Maya indirectly. This glance has a dim halo that is known as Shambhu and this Shambhu actually contacts Maya. That is Lord Shiva and Parvati who are the mother and father of our universe. then we saw pradhan is like the cooked down soup of the mahat uh, of mahatatva and mahatatva is the separated elements the different material elements we have discussed we saw how the glance of mahavishnu has two aspects to it one power aspect is known as mahavishnu and the aspect that agitates uh, the material elements is known as advaita acharya uh, then we saw uh, yeah how lord vishnu or rather karuna the kshay vishnu or you can call him maha vishnu he is the original cause of creation whereas uh, shambhu and maya are the immediate cause or rather that's what we uh, they are responsible for the further creation but the desire of maha vishnu is the original cause class number 6 we did verses 9 to 15 and uh, we got into the details of creation we discussed the male and female principle of creation how maya and shambhu actually execute creation then we saw how the universes are like little golden sperms that emanate from the pores of the body of mahavishnu when he exhales and enters into the accommodating chamber uh, which is the material world and the elements that are there they cover these seeds and they enlarge the, these golden sperms enlarge but still these elements are not cooperating then the different characters like garbhodaka shay vishnu who is an expansion of mahavishnu is created shirodaka shay vishnu comes from his left limb and brahma prajapati is created from his right limb, right limb so this was discussed then we saw how the elements of nature go and pray to mahavishnu to help them combine class number 7 we covered verses 16 to 21 we saw that the false ego is a gift from shambhu to us however the good side of it is that the internal energy is much more powerful and with the mercy of the devotees performing devotional service we can easily conquer this false ego and return back to the spiritual world so we saw that the ingredients of matter were praying to mahavishnu Mm. and uh, while the prayer to mahavishnu shirodaka shay vishnu entered the elements with his energy kali and helped these materials to cooperate they formed layers around the sperm and it started expanding and expanding and they were floating like footballs for eons and the ga- and uh, and eons and then the garbhodak uh, vishnu he entered into the garbhodak ocean and from the sweat of his body the garbhodak ocean was created and this garbhodaka shay vishnu he himself expanded as the original virat rupa and brahma got a blueprint of this virat rupa in his subtle body the subtle uh, body of the universal form was given to brahma uh, before he was born in the lotus it was transferred to the subtle body of brahma then um, the lord actually in the blueprint he teaches where each and every part of the universe will fit and then he withdraws his original virat rupa and then the karma and activity of the jeevas who are resting inside the body of garbhodaka shay vishnu of each and every universe is awakened and we discuss the intrinsic nature of the jeeva how the jeeva is dependent on the lord yet they are part and parcel of the supreme lord class number 8 this was the last class of part 1 so we discovered verses
we saw that Brahma emerged from the lotus and he was confused as to who he was. Saraswati Devi gave him the Gopal Mantra. He chanted this for many, many years and then he heard a beautiful sound which was Krishna's flute. And once he heard the sound of Krishna's flute, automatically the Kanagaite came out of his mouth. And this was his second initiation. He was directly initiated by Krishna for the second time. And then when he, uh, he made the statement, by the recollection of Kamagaitri, it seems to me that I am the eternal maid servant of Krishna. Um, though the other mysteries in regard to the condition of the maid servant of Krishna were not revealed to him, uh, then he begins to sing the Brahma Samhita prayers. And then, that's what we're going to discuss today. And then Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati makes a statement, readers are requested to study and try to enter the spirit of this Brahma Samhita prayers with great care and attention as a regular daily function. And the mantra starts from verse number 29, which we have already read today. And we sing this prayer during our Shringara Arati. So, um, or welcoming the deities, as we call it. Okay? So, we read verse number 21, beginning, 29, sorry, beginning with Chintamani, Prakara, Sadmashu, Kalpavriksha. Correct? Yeah. Prakara, Sadmashu, Kalpavriksha. Okay. So, um, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saras, actually you just look at the Sanskrit, it begins with Chintamani Prakara Sadmashu Kalpavriksha Lakshavartishu Surabhi Rabhithala Yantam. But you look at the translation given by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, how he translates this. He says, I worship Govinda, the primeval lord, the first progenitor who is tending cows, yielding all desire in the abode, built with spiritual gems, surrounded by millions of purpose trees. So this is what he begins with. If you look at the verse, Sanskrit verse, it begins with the spiritual gems. It doesn't begin with Govinda who is tending cows. But rather, Bhakti Sundarana Saraswati in his translation, he has given more importance to this point. He begins with, I worship Govinda, the primeval lord, who is the first progenitor with tending cows. So that's how Govinda is introduced, or Krishna is introduced. That is the main function of Krishna, actually. He's the lover of cows. Uh, all this chintamani and all takes a second stand, actually. At least in the rasa of Bhakti, uh, how Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati visualizes uh, uh, Krishna. Not only Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, but we have also seen how Brahma, even he had this fascination. In the very first verse, remember Ishvara Paramakrishna, Satchidananda Vikraha, Anadi Radir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. The original cause of all causes is Krishna. But which Krishna? Govinda Krishna. Even Brahma has this realization. And everyone has this fascination for the Govinda aspect of Krishna. Uh, that's what makes Krishna as Krishna. He is the lord of the cows. That is his first, uh, you know, say, uh, his favorite thing, being the lord of cows. Then only he is the lord of the Brahmanas or whoever it is. But first he is the lord of the cows. So he loves the cows. Now, okay, uh, when Krishna was three years old, when he was a very, very small baby, three years old, he was actually, he started walking, he was running, and he was a little boy, and he was very excited, uh, born in, I mean, uh, uh, he was born and raised in a Vaishya family, um, he was very excited, uh, because he saw that his family uh, occupation was tending cows, so he was extremely excited, and when he was three years old, he went and told his parents that he was ready to hurt the cows. Okay? But Mother Yashoda, she uh, tried to stop him. I'm going to just merge uh, Mataji. Hold on. Okay. So when Krishna was three years old, he was ready to hurt the cows. And Mother Yashoda didn't like that because she didn't want Krishna to leave him and go. So she wanted to stop him. And then... Um, you know, she said, look, you can't hurt cows. Cows are so big. How are you? are so tiny. Where are you going to go and hurt such big, big cows? So it's not possible. But Krishna was very adamant. So Nanda Maharaj told that you can try the calves first. So first you can start hurting calves. Okay. So um, Krishna's uh, first day came. Then he got the approval from his parents uh, to hurt calves. And uh, when Krishna was ready for his first day, there was a joyous occasion. And uh, he was taking up his family dharma of herding cows, so he was very, very happy. And everybody gave him beautiful, beautiful gifts. Some people gave him buffalo horns, he was given ropes, he was given his first flute. He was given all kinds of things as a gift for starting his occupation. And Yashoda wanted to give him nice ethnic shoes. She wanted to give him shoes because Krishna 
is going on the uh, he's going to go on the roads uh, he's going to walk on the dust and thorns so yeshua felt oh my child needs protection so she wanted to give him beautiful shoes and she also wanted to give him a colorful bright umbrella with lots of gems and a servant to hold this umbrella uh, uh, so that krishna was protected from the sun and rain okay so when these gifts were given to krishna by mother yashoda krishna said he won't accept it he said i won't accept all these gifts i will accept it only if you give me four shoes for each and every calf and each servant with an umbrella for each calf i need a separate servant with umbrella and for all the calf i need four pairs of shoes so <coughs> you know krishna had so many calf so he wanted four uh, uh, pairs of shoes i mean four uh, rather four shoes uh, two pairs of shoes for each calf and he wanted for each calf a servant with an umbrella and then yashoda said look they are animals they don't need all this and at that time krishna spoke this famous word dharmo rakshati rakshatah he who protects dharma is protected by it it is a self sustaining process if you uphold the principles of dharma that will occur the cows are our dharma we are vaishya we have to herd cows that is our dharma varna shama dharma is actually to herd cows how will i take anything better for myself that is not given to these cows so that was his argument and then he said i won't take these gifts but the rest of the gifts he accepted um so like that he took the calves uh, for herding so this is the love uh, krishna had for his cows and calves he had a lot of love then we know um, you know like later how he got to herd cows after gopashtami there is a past time of krishna herding cows later so um, this is how uh, it is now the cows of krishna are all surubi cows and they can give oceans and oceans of milk and not just milk they can practically give anything because they are from the spiritual world because in the goloka vrindavan everything is spiritual so uh, cow may not give just milk it will give anything you ask the cow so like that these are all vishkul pulling cows now something a little details about the cow uh, nanda maharaj he had 900000 cows and vishuna chakravarti Uh, he gives the description of the cows of vrindavan uh, krishna used to call each and every cow by name and if any cow was missing krishna would immediately chase after the missing cow and call her by name and bring her back so vishuna chakravarti thakur in the commentary he writes krishna would climb on the vamshiva tree and he would play the flute and in that process he would call all his cows who were gone for herding when he was returning home back, back home now krishna cows this is interesting we don't have to remember all these details but uh, we can hear about the transcendental cows how they are so i just we don't have to remember everything though but i'll just share a few interesting facts about about these cows the cows were divided into herds by color so there were four groups four colored cows four groups of cows one set was black cows the other set was white cows then he had reddish cows and he had yellowish cows okay in each color set that is you have four groups okay in each group was further uh, 25 divisions were there 25 divisions within each color group so that made a total of 100 herds not 100 cows 100 groups 100 herds so there were also eight herds of cows that were spotted or speckled or had heads shaped like a mridanga or that had tilak marks on their foreheads they were a, they were a total of 108 different herds of cows each of the 108 had a herd leader so each cow cow herd group had a herd leader krishna had a leader for everyone so to mm-hmm. count these 108 groups of cows distinguished by color and form krishna uses his japamala what do we use our japamala for we use it for chanting krishna's name but look at krishna he uses his japamala to count the number of cows in his herd and what is this japamala it's the pearl necklace that krishna wears on his neck so when krishna calls out by color he calls a davali that means it's the name of a white cow the whole group of white cows come forward and when krishna calls hamsi chandani ganga mukta and so on the 24 other groups of white cows come okay so that's how once he calls the leader the whole group will come then uh, talk about the reddish cows they are called as aruni kumkuma saraswati etc these are these sets aruni kumkuma saraswati like that you've got names for each set 
For the blackish ones, he has the names Shamala, Dhumala, Yamuna, etc. And the yellowish ones are Pita, Tingala, Hirataki, etc. Uh, sorry, Haritaki, Haritaki, etc. And all these uh, classifications of these cows, see, Krishna, I mean, like one might ask, why do you want to worry about cows now? But these are Krishna's cows, so they're important. So, of course, we don't have to remember, but still we can relish uh, Krishna's pastime uh, by enjoying uh, what all Krishna does and see how much love he has for the cows. So, all this is described in Vishwana Chakravarti's Bhagavatam Purport, uh, Chapter 35, verse 19, Purport of Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur. Then, uh, the cows that are classified by mark. So, in these groups, the tilaka marks on their forehead, they are called uh, Chitrita, Chitra, Tilaka, Dhirga Tilaka, and Hyat Tilaka. The groups uh, and the other groups are known as classified by the shape of their head are known as Mridanga Mukhi, uh, Simha Mukhi, and so on. So, for, to call these cows, Krishna sits on top of a tree and he plays the flute uh, to keep a check on the number of all these uh, cows herding with him. He uses his pearl necklace. And before returning home, he calls each and every cow by their name. But as he say the name, he uses the sound of his flute, actually, to call out to these cows. He calls each one of them by playing his flute. Okay, by, and by hearing the flute sound in each pitch, when the flute sound is played, the particular name of the cow is heard. Like, for example, if he plays a particular pitch on a flute, Chandrika is heard, Dhavali is heard, Yavali is heard. At that, the names of the cows are heard. And if you are if he's calling out the Chandrika cow, only Chandrika cow is able to hear, and hear her name. Though, mm-hmm. through the sound of Krishna's flute, the other cows don't understand. Okay. So if Krishna is playing the flute, there's a particular uh, pitch in which she's playing the flute, uh, calling out the Chandrika, only Chandrika is hearing her name. And then she gets very delighted to hear her name being called, and uh, she comes running to Krishna. So like this, he calls all the cows by their name with the help of his flute, and no cow is left behind. All of them come and assemble near Krishna with their group leaders. So those are Krishna maintains all the cows, and each and every cow in Vrindavan is a wish fulfilling cow. So these are about the cows. Now, I worship Govinda, the communal lord, who is the top progenitor, who is tending the cows, yielding all desire. Next part of the verse is, in abode built with spiritual gems surrounded by millions of purpose trees. So first we will see about spiritual gems. Interestingly, in the purport, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur mentions that Goloka Vrindavan itself, the sand, the dust, the rock, Everything is Chantamani. And this Chantamani is very different from the touchstone of this material world. So let's see how it is different. Chantamani. First let's see how they use it uh, in Goloka Vrindavan. This Chantamani, they are just like found like, you know, how you see rocks on the road. Like in our material world also, we have so many stones and rocks and dust. Like that, uh, in Goloka Vrindavan, everything is Chantamani. And the gopis, they use it to make their anklets. They use it to, uh, as a toe support on their slippers. Like you've seen these uh, sannyasi shoes and uh, wooden shoes of those days, right? So they have a, a, a feet-shaped plant, and on top of that, between the big toe and the rest of the fingers, there is a separator, one small separator. So for that separator, these gopis, they use chintamani jewels to separate the toe and the rest of the fingers. That's how they use them. They use it as slippers, basically, support for slippers. And then, um, not only that, Vrindavan Vasis use Chintamani as a door stopper to keep the door open so that they can see Krishna coming inside the city or inside the village. When he has gone for herding cows, so when it's evening, all the gopis are so excited to see Krishna. So everyone keeps the door open, and as a door stopper, they keep big, big Chintamani. Huge Chintamani are kept. Um, so there is actually uh, a pastime of... Uh, um, uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, about Hera Panchami. So Hera Panchami is a festival that is celebrated in Jagannath Puri that happens after the Rathyatra. Hmm? After the Rathyatra, uh, Lord Jagannath, uh, he goes to the Gundicha temple, which is equivalent to Vrindavan. So basically, uh, Jagannath, he leaves his uh, 
uh, Dwaraka area, uh, which is actually the Jagannathpuri temple, which is somewhat equated to Dwaraka because the mood is like Dwaraka mood. From there, during Ratayatra, he actually goes to Kundicha temple, which is like Vrindavan for him. Okay, so he leaves his goddess of fortune and he goes to live in Vrindavan. So when he leaves the Jagannath temple, which is like Dwaraka, the goddess of fortune, she becomes so upset that the Lord leaves her association and he goes to enjoy with the gopis. So, because she's so upset, there's a festival that is celebrated called the Hera Panchan. What the festival is, is that uh, the goddess of fortune, she comes in a beautiful palanquin to attack Jagannath and his servants. So, goddess of fortune is carried in a lovely palanquin bedecked with beautiful jewels. Uh, very rare and very costly jewels are all bedecked from the palanquin. And the goddess of fortune, because she's goddess of fortune, she's the owner of all those jewels. So she sits on that and with a lot of pride, she comes to attack Lord Jagannath because he has left her and he's gone to some other ladies, um, to the gopis basically. So um, she comes with her servant. All her lady servants are assisting her and they all reach Gumbicha Mandar in a procession. And they go, all the lady servants are attacking the male servants of Lord Jagannath. All the men are being hit by sticks and everyone is being attacked. So, Goddess Lakshmi, she shows her power that she is the wife of the Lord and she exercises her position as the goddess of fortune. Uh, she becomes very, very angry and uh, in that mood, uh, you know, the sticks, they are actually attacking the entire Gundicha temple and the servants are all beaten up. And then the servants are arrested by the servants of Lord Goddess Lakshmi. And then she chastises Lord Jagannath. She, she screams at Lord Jagannath and she chastises him, saying that you are so bad, you left me and you went somewhere else and all that. So uh, at that time, Jagannath's servants, they promise, they surrender to these ladies and they promise that they will bring back Jagannath the very next day, but they don't keep up their promise. And Jagannath comes back maybe after the eighth day or something. I don't know the exact number of days of Ratyatra, um, but he comes back much later. So uh, that's how uh, the celebration is. So this is called as the Hera Panchan festival. Goddess of Fortune being angry with Lord Jagannath and she and her servants are attacking the Gundicha Mandir because Lord Jagannath has left her company. Okay. Now, when this uh, festival was going on, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Vastakur, all of them, um, Sarup Damodar, all the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, they were standing there and they were watching. So when this uh, thing was happening, uh, Srivast Thakur, he got very excited. So Srivast Thakur, as we all know, he is Narada. Okay? Narada is always in the mood of worship of Lakshmi Narayan. Mm-hmm. That's the mood of Narada, generally. He's na- he always says Narayana, Narayana. Right? So his actual mood is the worship of Lakshmi Narayan. So when he sees his worshipable goddess of fortune has defeated all the servants of uh, Lord Jagannath who has gone in his Vrindavan mood, uh, he thought this is awesome. So he said, you are all Vrindavan ha- inhabitants. Uh, what is your opulence? Maybe few leaves, few twigs, flowers, some churned yogurt. But here, Laksh- here you see Lakshmi. She is sitting on the throne. And, uh, you know, and she's so great and she's able to easily defeat all your Jagannath servants. That is the glory of my Lakshmi. So, um, like that, Narada, he becomes very excited uh, seeing uh, Lakshmi uh, defeating everybody. And uh, he talks about Rindavan, saying that, Oh, to Rindavan, look at my Vaikuntha. So, and look at my goddess of fortune. So, at that time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he starts laughing. And uh, he's like, okay, you're talking a lot. Uh, so he looks at uh, Swarupta Madhur to give a counter. So at that time, Swarupta Madhur, you know, Venus Swarupta Madhur is actually, uh, mm-hmm. in some places she's Valita, in some places she's Vishaka. So take her to be one of these two, Saki. Okay? Uh, in many places she's actually Lalita, in some places she's mentioned as Vishaka. There are different scriptures, I mean, like Gargano, basically, Deepika gives one view. Another, uh, like, Bhakti Sadhanta Saraswati gives a different view. So there is a little difference, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. So basically, she's one of the chief of the Ashtasakis. She's the leader of the Ashtasakis. Okay, she, uh, she, he, because it's Swarup Damodar here. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looks at Swarup Damodar and says, okay, it's time for you to talk about Rundavan. Then, at that time, uh, Swarup Damodar, he paraphrases this verse 29 of Brahma Samhita. Uh, he uh, he paraphrases this verse about how everything is Chintamani 
in Goloka Vrindavan. What are you talking about uh, jewels? But in, uh, you know, you're talking about some jewels studied on a palanquin, blah, blah. Uh, look at my uh, Goloka Vrindavan. Everything is Shintamani. Even the dust, the people walk on, they walk on Shintamani. They use it as door stoppers. They use it on their feet. So you're talking about the opulence of Vrindavan here or what? So like that, he uh, starts arguing with Shiva Thakur. And um, he says, all the trees are wishful-fulfilling trees. They're all Kalpa Vrikshas. So, you know, don't talk about uh, Goloka Vrindavan if you don't know anything about it. Something like that. They're just having a fun argument. And then he defeats Srivas Pandit. When Srivas Pandit is defeated, when Narada is defeated by Lalita Saki slash Vishaka Saki, keep whatever you want. So when uh, uh, Srivas Thakur is defeated like this, he feels ecstasy because he is also a devotee of Lord Krishna at the same time. It is Srivast Thakur. He is a devotee of Chala Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, his Narayana mood came up. Uh, Narayana worship mood uh, like showed up, but still he is Srivast Thakur, right? He is also a resident of Kuloka Vrindavan as an associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he felt ecstasy in being defeated and he started jumping and he claps and he laughs, clapping his arms. So there's a very nice pastime where um, Swarupta Mother actually quotes verse number 29 and also verse number 56 in a different way, paraphrased. It's not the exact verse that he quotes, but the content is the same from Brahma Samhita about everything being Chintamani in Goloka Vrindavan. Okay. Now we have to see some interesting quotes which I want to present uh, uh, because all the Maharajas have presented these quotes, so I thought that it is important for us to hear these just for next year we can hear these. Uh, Shri, Shri Vrajariti Chintamani, written by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. It talks about the dust of Raja. So let's see what he has to say about the dust of Raja. In some places, the ground of Raja is made of camphor dust. In some places, it is saffron. In some places, it is made of ground musk. And in some places, it is made of aromatic substances used in religious ceremonies. In some places, the ground of Raja is made of emeralds. In other places, it is made of a variety of precious gems. In some places, of uh, the fresh grasses of Raja, which are eaten by the cows and other em animals, in some places, there are emeralds studded. So this is how Goloka Vrindavan is. In some places, the ground of Raja is like a golden Jambu river. In other places, it is made of sapphires. Although all the trees in Vrindavan are Kalpa Vriksha trees, uh, Wait, 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 wait. Let's not go to Kalpa Riksha. Okay, we'll go to Kalpa Riksha. Fine. Although all the trees in Vrindavan are Kalpa Riksha trees, still there is one among them which is especially glorious. That tree is the source of all the Kalpa Rikshas, and because of this tree, the rest of the trees in her association, they become Kalpa Riksha trees. So, and uh, Vishma Chakravarti Thakur, he says that this particular tree grows next to a jeweled palace in a supremely charming grove. It appears to be the Kalpa Viksha that we see on the center of the world in Goloka Vrindavan where Radha and Krishna are residing. Um, it appears to be that, but I don't want to give a committal uh, word, uh, but still it appears to be that. Because of that one uh, Kalpa Viksha tree which is present at the rest of the trees that grow in Goloka Vrindavan and also in Bhauma Vrindavan, all the trees are Kalpa Viksha trees. That's why when you go on uh, Vajaparikrama, when you go to Vrindavan, uh, everybody recommends that you go and pray to these trees, not for material desires, but for spiritual desires. And immediately, because they are Kalpa Vriksha trees, they will satisfy you. Immediately, they will give result. So that is the power of Kalpa Vriksha trees, especially when you go to Vrindavan, pray to the trees. They are very, very merciful. The trees will grant your spiritual desires. So, uh, Prabodhan, Prabodhan and the Saraswati, who wrote Vrindavan Mahimam Rata, he says, uh, For the pleasure of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna, the regal trees and Vrindavan forest assume many different forms. Some assume forms of the sweetest nectar, others take the form of splendid transcendental milk and cream, other forms of intoxicating liquors, uh, other forms of crystal, and other forms of very cool and camphor. Uh, me, Vrindavan, where Following Sri Sri Radha Krishna joking orders, the fortunate regal trees bow down to offer respects, resting their branches on the ground, then become charming uh, flower-filled mini-branches pavilion, and then 
from where the hand uh, can grasp up to the lovely tops bloom with many flowers and show auspiciousness to me may vrindavan forest where some of the trees are more splendid than millions of blazing mithi suns some are more brilliant than millions of kalpagni fires burning at the time of cosmic cosmic dilution dissolution some more charming than a great flood of splendid cooling moonlight some more splendid than red gunja berries some more clear and splendid than millions of brilliant crystals some charmingly decorated with splendid new shoes some splendid as a light, limitless flood of molten gold some splendid as diamond necklaces some splendid as flocks of parrots some splendid as black mascara and some splendid as as roses and where in this way the eternal blissful nectarian spiritual form of the many regal wonderful flower filled trees display a great array of many different splendid and in, in indescribable transcendental colors be eternally manifest before me this is all a um, description of goloka vrindavan for you to hear desire trees any fruit any variety any time anything you want is available in vrindavan uh actually there is a kalpavriksha tree um, a special kalpavriksha tree especially for us um, because we are followers of shri prabhupada that is there uh, in the uh, krishna balram mandir in the center of the krishna balram mandir in vrindavan you can see a tree okay so actually when the krishna balram mandir was built uh, they wanted to cut down the tree because it is somewhat in the center of the courtyard it's like you know uh, uh, actually uh, what do you say obstructing uh, the pathway and all that so um, everyone they wanted to cut the tree so at that time shri prabhupada said um, don't cut the tree it's a very special tree it's a desire tree so don't cut the tree at all so even to this day this, this tree is worshiped not only this tree there are so many trees that are worshiped actually every tree is worshiped in vrindavan so each and every tree is worshiped in vrindavan i think in radha damodar temple or something there is one tree where everyone goes and embraces so like that uh, uh, this tree in uh, in our krishna balram temple is actually a tamal tree black tree tamal trees are exactly like krish uh, i mean the gopis when they would feel separation from krishna they would go and embrace the tamal tree because it is blackish so they would feel like they are embracing krishna in their separation so the tamal tree is very special so uh, prabhupa said not to chop this tree okay and um, and desire tree when we say we go to vrindavan and we say desire tree it means um devotees they have desire only for krishna uh, they have only desire for krishna they don't have these material desires though see this on goloka vrindavan uh, chintamani can yield anything wish fulfilling everything is wish fulfilling but still are they devotees using it to produce all that are they using it to produce wealth or their uh, or all that no they don't use it for that they only uh, use it like you know how you would use an ordinary stone because all that their heart wants is krishna they don't want these material things so that is the beauty of vrindavan everything is available but nobody cares for it because they are just saturated with love for krishna and they feel satisfied with that so why would they care for all this that's like that so that's how uh, goloka vrindavan is and that's how dhamma vrindavan is also uh, especially when we go to vrindavan we must have uh, they say we see vrindavan through our ears not with our eyes because when we go and see the material things around us we uh, we think oh is this all so much dust or oh, bullocks and honking sound breakers and uh, you know so much uh, dirty yamuna flowing is this what they are glorifying is this what bhagavatam talks about oh it's so beautiful it's so glorious we start making offenses we don't see vrindavan the way it should be seen that's why it's always said we see vrindavan through our ears we hear about vrindavan understand the glory of vrindavan and then we make a this is true vrindavan then we can appreciate the beauty of vrindavan it's very beautiful uh, if we have the right uh, consciousness we can appreciate vrindavan now so this was about the kalpa vriksha trees right so uh, so far uh, in that verse we saw about the cows we saw about spiritual gems then we saw about purpose tree and the last part of the verse is uh, always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of lakshmis or gopis so the gopis uh, we know that uh, so many gopis are there in vrindavan uh, when krishna uh, did his rasa dance there were so many gopis for each gopi there was a krishna who manifested and danced with the, the gopi so like that hundreds and thousands of gopis are there in vrindavan and they are all serving krishna similarly in dwarka we have more than 15108 queens 
and then we have so many other devotees. So like that, uh, this uh, Goloka Vrindavan is surrounded by hundreds and thousands of Lakshmis. And uh, of course, about the Gopis, we will discuss in detail in the later verses because that part is reserved for those verses uh, where this topic again comes. So I think I'll, I'll not uh, elaborate more on the Gopis. But uh, that's what it is. We know that uh, he's constantly served uh, by such beautiful Lakshmi, thousands of Lakshmi. So, Brahma, he is having this realization. And we, are, we should understand that, of course, we saw in the previous verses that Brahma also had material desire because he wanted to create. But we should not make the offense of thinking that Brahma is also like us. No. Uh, Brahma is a very special person. He is not ordinary. Uh, of course, he has to create, etc., uh, and the law, because the Lord is asking him to do so, and also it is duty to create. But still, look at Brahma. He's having such a great realization. He's having such a great revelation. And by his mercy, we are able to hear about Goloka Vrindavan, Bhauma Vrindavan, and appreciate it in the, uh, appreciate the verses of Brahma Samhita. So I'll stop here. Uh, if there are any comments, additions, corrections, questions, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Preeti, Denver Pranam. Suchata Mataji. Yeah, such a nice description of the Bolaka. I just had a, a very basic question. Um, there are two types of cows, is it? Like Kamadhenu and Surabhi, are they same or are they different? Same, uh, same, same. same. So that's how the Maharajas sounded all of them. They said it's the same because in one seminar, Rumpad Maharaj was talking about Kamadenu, uh, about how Jamadagni uh, had Kamadenu and Kartaviri Arjuna went to get it. It's the same. See, that Kamadenu is going to yield uh, constant tons of milk and also he, it yielded food, right, when the Brahmanas were hungry. But, uh-huh. uh, yeah, but here, uh, just in the spiritual world, these Surabi cows, each and every cow is a Kamadenu cow and not only milk, it can simply yield anything. But the Brajvasi is they are so pure-hearted, they are not, many, most of them they don't care for it. In the sense, they are saturated with love for Krishna. Of course, if you go and ask milk to make sweet for Krishna, the Kamadenus are going to give, no doubt. But they are not attached to the idea that this Kamadenu is giving me uh, this milk or this uh, food or whatever. It's like that. Okay? Yeah, they are the same matter. And uh and also I have um, uh, another question. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The uh, tree you said... Uh, in the uh, Krishna Balram temple is the Tamal tree, right? Mm-hmm. The black Tamal yeah. tree? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to confirm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Tamal Krishna Maharaj was telling <laughs> that when they were constructing the temple and many people were talking that they are going to cut down the tree, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was thinking in his mind because his name is Tamal Krishna, he should make his Japamala from the Tamal tree. <laughs> but then Prabhupada said, nothing doing, we are not cutting it. So it never happened that he oh, made a okay. Jakamala from that. Sure. Thank you, Preeti. I may have to log off now. Sure, 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 sure. Thank you for joining, Sri Jakamala. I'll go. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Sri Mataji. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. I just wanted to, um, and you were talking about the trees of Vrindavan. It reminded me of this verse in the, um, what is it, the, what's it called? The Light of the Bhagavata. And it talks about, it speaks about the, about the tree. So I wanted to read this one verse and a little bit of the purport. Yes. It's very, yes, very yes. nice. Yes. So it's verse Beautiful. number 24. It says, When the Lord entered the forest of Vrindavana, all the inhabitants of the forest, both animate and inanimate, were eager to receive him. He saw that the flowers of the forest, all fully blossoming, were weeping in ecstasy, honey flowing down their petals. Mm-hmm. The waterfalls on the hilly rocks were gladly flowing, and one could hear sweet sounds from the cave nearby. The Lord and His mul- and the purport. The Lord and His multifarious energy, and therefore the Lord and His energies are. The Lord has multifarious energy, and therefore mm-hmm. the Lord and His energies are identical. Among His various energies, the material energy is one, and it is said that the, the Bhagavad Gita that the material energy is inferior and faulty to spiritual energy. Spiritual energy is superior because without contact with the spiritual energy, the material energy alone cannot produce anything. Then it says, let's skip a little bit down, has, in the spiritual world, everything is spirit. 
We have already discussed this. The personality of Godhead, the original source of all energy, is able to convert spirit into matter and matter into spirit. For him, there is no difference between matter and spirit. He is therefore called Kaivalya. In Lord Sri Krishna's transcendental pastimes, he reciprocates with spirit. When he is in the mortal world, the material qualities cannot work upon him. Says, Everything is therefore and matter, therefore matter and spirit by the grace of the Almighty, although there is a difference between matter and spirit for the ordinary living being. Flowers, waterfalls, trees, fruits, hills, caves, birds, beasts, and human beings are nothing but combinations of God's energy. Therefore, when the personality of God had appeared before them, they all became spiritually inclined, and by natural affection, they wanted to serve the Almighty in various capacities. So. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, everything is spiritual. Everything is animated in the spiritual world. Everybody is there to serve Krishna. Krishna, so nice, Mataji. Thank you for reading that. That's so beautiful, actually. So nice. Thanks. Thank you. I thought that just was so appropriately fit in when you were describing yeah. that. And especially, and I was noticing also in that verse that um, in the in this, the uh, verse 29, it says, mm-hmm. I like, I'm I've got to go back to it, but um, let me look at it really quick. Um, oh my goodness, where is it? When it talks about the syntomony, it said the entity, that entity. Oh. I don't know if you let me just find it. <laughs> oh. It says it says in the purport it says. Um, mm. The Chintamani which serves the material in the building of the abode of the Supreme Lord of Goloka is far rarer and more agreeable entity than the Philosopher's Stone. I oh, thought yeah, it was I very... To, thanks, yeah, thank you for reminding me because I missed one talk which I have to say. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I, don't, I don't have any notes for it being... Of course, it is an entity since everything is uh, alive in the spiritual world, but I just missed one paragraph that I wanted to say uh, yeah. about Chintamani. So, in Goloka Vrindavan, the ground is Shantamani gem and yields all desire. In common terms, we use the name touchstone to, make, uh, to, uh, to mean that which turns iron into gold. In this world, when we say philosopher's stone or touchstone, we mean uh, about uh, a stone that, when it, uh, that is used to convert iron into gold. So, um, there is this uh, method of doing it that uh, Maharaj was explaining that they drink, uh, these yogis, um, they uh, practice very heavy austerities and they drink mercury and they're able to hold it in their body and they sleep it out o- overnight. And then the next day morning they urinate and uh, when they urinate uh, from their body, um, the liquid that comes out, it actually converts iron into gold. So uh, in the material world, it is possible for certain yogis to have gone through certain practices. But anyhow, uh, a touch stone is used to, when it touches other iron pieces, that also becomes stone. So that's how it is used in this material world, also known as philosopher's stone. But in the spiritual world, it is chintamani. It is just everything. And uh, also I wanted to say the story of Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami, he found a touch stone uh, it's a kind that, that when it touches iron, it converts into gold. And uh, Sanatan Goswami had actually thrown this material touchstone that is there in this world into a garbage. And uh, once uh, a Shaivite, uh, he heard about this, that Sanatan Goswami had a touchstone, but he simply thrown it somewhere. So he went to Sanatan Goswami to ask him and uh, get the touchstone because he wanted the touchstone because it can practically give you so much gold. So he was very excited to get that touch stone. So he went and asked Sanatan Goswami. At that time, Sanatan Goswami, he showed him a rubbish heap, a garbage heap. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, he said, oh, I've thrown it there. You can go pick it up like that. So this uh, Shavite was like very happy because Sanatan Goswami had simply thrown it and you don't care for it. So he picked up the touch stone uh, and he went, he went home and he touched everything and everything became gold. So, and then once he was doing this, he was very, very happy for a while. Then he started thinking. He thought, why is the Sanatan Goswami keeping this touchstone in a rubbish heap? Uh, That means he has something more valuable with him. So, um, maybe he has something more valuable than this touchstone. So, I must have it. 
So he thought like that, and then uh, he went to Sanatan Goswami, and he asked, uh, uh, you know, uh, for that, for what, what is it that you have, uh, that you have simply given away this stuff to him? And that's when uh, Sanatan Goswami gives him the, tells him, uh, if you give up this stuff to if you, if you give it up, I can give you what, what I have, which is much, much, much more valuable than this stuff to And then he gives him the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra. And later, this person becomes a devotee. So, um, I, sorry, Mataji, I had written it down, but I forgot to um, talk about it. And also, uh, the dust, uh, like Akura, he glorifies the dust so much uh, of, of Vrindavan and the Srimad Bhagavatam. And generally, you see how much reverence people have when they visit Vrindavan. Uh, they roll on the dust. Uh, they do Dandavats Parikrama. So that the dust is all over you because this dust is Chintamani. Um, they can give us... Uh, spiritual love, for, it can give us love for Krishna. So um, that's the glory. Even when people go to Vrindavan, when someone is asked, what do you want from Vrindavan? Usually they say, just get me some dust because the dust is so powerful. Yeah, Mataji, please. Did you want to add anything else? Panishri Mataji, sorry, I didn't mean to cut I, you. One other thing I want to add, I was just, I said that in Dhamani, the entity that says everything has life. And then about the Lakshmi, in the in the Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam in the third canto in the chapter fifteen when it's the description of the kingdom of God, there's also that um, a little bit of in the purport, Srila Prabhupada speaks about this particular verse of the Samhita. And he hmm. says that um, the translation if if I have time I'll read do you mind if I read Go it? Ahead, please, please, okay, please, so the translation please. reads The ladies in the Vikunda planets are as beautiful as the goddess of fortune herself. Such transcendently beautiful ladies, their hands playing with lotuses, and their leg bangles tingling, are sometimes seen sweeping the marble walls, which are bedecked at intervals with golden borders, in order to receive the grace of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The purport. Prabhupada, right? in the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that the Supreme Lord Govinda is always served in his abode by many, many millions of goddesses of fortune. Lakshmi Sahasrasvata Sam Brahma Yamanam. These millions and trillions of goddesses of fortune who reside in the Vaikuntha planet are not exactly consorts of the Supreme Personality of the Godhead, but are the wives of the devotees of the Lord and also engage in the service of the Supreme Personality of the Godhead. It is stated here that in the Vaikuntha planet, the houses are made of marble. Similarly, in the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that the ground on the Vaikuntha planet is made of touchstone. There is no need to sweep the stone in Vaikuntha where there is hardly any dust on it. But still, in order to satisfy the Lord, the ladies, ladies there are always eager, always engaged in dusting the marble walls. Why? The reason is that they are eager to achieve the grace of the Lord by doing so. Mm. Oh. Beautiful. I also read that little bit about the goddess of fortune. Yeah, beautiful, Natalie. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. Light of Bhagavat, Bhagavatam, Everything. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Hare Mataji, Jadar Mataji. It's very nice, Kas Mataji. Uh, very nice. Uh, I have no questions, Mataji. Uh, the way I explain, uh, that very good, Mataji. And also, Mataji added to come in. Uh, what, what, what? Mataji also some uh, comments here, Mataji. Uh, hmm. They are making uh, more sense to me, Mataji. Yeah. Uh, now, the next job is to read it uh, in a peace of mind, then uh, I'll answer more, Mataji. Yeah. No questions, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Ganapati Pro. Okay, I think uh, Vishwan Prabhu just dropped off. I'm not sure why, but we'll probably end the call. Vansha Kalpata Rupescha, Krupa Sandhu Pyayinacha, Patita Nam, Pavane Pyo, Vaishnavi Pyo, Namo Namo, Ananta Koti Vaishnavi Ramda Kejai, Amacharya Shri Haridas Thakur Kejai, Shri Brahma Samhita Kejai. All glories to the Asamal Devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you all so much for your beautiful very nice discussion and thanks Mataji for sharing such nice purpose. Thank you. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol.